welcome back to the Inspired Entrepreneur with Heather Hope. Hey guys, welcome back. Merry Christmas to you. Today is December 25th. You know what? Let's keep this a little bit shorter today just so you can do some other stuff. (laughs) Um, yeah, so happy or happy Christmas. That's what they or happy happy Christmas. That's what they do. Uh, British people, let me know. <laughs> I know I hear that a lot on um, movies, holiday movies for um, people over in that area of the world. So, oh my gosh! So welcome back. This is the Inspired Entrepreneur. This is Heather Hope, and um, you know what? I just thought of something um, for Christmas. One of the Christmas presents I just ordered it like yesterday in in the world over here. Um, and it should have came on the 24th on Christmas Eve. But anyway, I ordered ancestry. What's it called? Ancestry, ancestry, ancestry DNA. I have been so curious of my roots. I think I have, I just, I don't know. I've just been very curious of, um, where my family came from. And so I was inspired. I was watching a movie or I was watching a documentary on this one guy. And I won't get into the details of that because that was pretty cool. But it was a lot. But um, but he's an Irish American. So he was born in America, of course. And he his family's from Ireland. And so he did a lot of charity work for Ireland, um, which helped a huge amount. And he did a lot of charity work here in the U.S. And I thought that was really cool because he he was, you know, he embraced. It seems like his family probably highly embraced. I don't know. Probably his parents were, you know, from Ireland or grandparents at least. But they really embraced their um, heritage from where you know, their family originally came from. And I just thought that was really admirable. It was really cool. And I'm more curious about other cultures and other countries and other things outside the U.S. this year. Um, And so, and my husband being half Italian, I was really curious. So I bought us both a test. And so I haven't told him yet. Of course, um, I'm recording this. I'm recording this podcast on the 23rd. So, um, so I was more curious. I don't know if he cares so much, but I care. <laughs> so I, w- I wanted to know where, you know, both of our families, because I'm curious about his other 50% of, um, from his father. So anyhow, I thought that was pretty cool. So let's jump into it. If you're new here, welcome. Um, this podcast is a daily podcast for at least the first year. Um, and it's based off of my book, The Inspired Entrepreneurs, 366 Days of Inspiration for You, the business owner, entrepreneur, um, law of attraction interested person, basically. So let's jump in to December 25th. Uh, let me know if you have the book. I've been getting more and more messages of people ordering the book and loving it. And so that's pretty cool. If you do have the book and you do love it, I would absolutely adore it if you... Um, were to leave me a review. Wouldn't that be a really cool Christmas present actually for me? (laughs) I'm just saying. Um, But that would be really cool to start seeing some reviews come in, especially if you do really love and enjoy the book. And if you're noticing um, synchronicities and things lining up and all that good stuff. So anyhow, let's jump in today's message. To really make a change to your life, you must see yourself as the person you want to be. Create that new identity and daydream about it every morning. Doing that little bit will build the momentum and you will start acting in ways that line up with that new identity. It's automatic. Okay, so this would go really great hand in hand with the 30 days to manifest your success journal because um, if you wanted to create a new identity, which I talked about a few days ago. Let me tell you what day to jump into if you're more interested or curious about the identity thing. Um, The 22nd, December 22nd, I talked about that. Um, It's part of my soul aligned business program. Um, It is stage two of or step two of that business program. 
of creating a new identity for who you're becoming. So we talked a lot about that on the 22nd. So you might want to jump into that. But for right now, that's how you have to see yourself in a different way. A different way. Because if you keep seeing yourself the way that it's always been or the way that it just is right now, then that's the way it will always be. So if you, if you're one of the, uh, lots of people who follow me want to be millionaires, um, want to actually, you know, physically manifest the millions of dollars. And so you really need to see yourself in the shoes of a, you know, multimillionaire. Of course, me, I've been seeing my, myself in the shoes of a billionaire because I want a yacht. So I want a super yacht. So don't even tell me I can get a yacht being a millionaire. I can, but I really want a super yacht. Those are insane. And maybe if I was on one, I'd be like, what the heck am I talking about? This thing is enormous. But, and there's like people everywhere because they have to take care of the boat. But anyway, um, I'm pretty like, um, interested in super yachts. So, um, and super yachts cost, you know, one, two, three hundred million dollars and more, of course more, but, um, Anyhow, so I'm pretty sure you need to be a billionaire to pay for a $300 million yacht. So that's kind of how math works, right? So anyway, um, so I picture myself quite often in the shoes of these people, like feeling like they must feel. Um, I've done, I've dived into enough Abraham over the last couple of years to, you know, know what the vibration of wealth is, you know, that feeling of endlessness that like, you know, when I was ordering the ancestry DNA, it wasn't that, you know, it was on sale and that was a big push of like, yeah, let's just do it now. And, you know, I'm curious, it was such an inspiration or inspired thought while I was watching this documentary of this, um, Irish American guy. And so I was just like instantly wanting to know. And then I looked it up and it was on sale. It was like $59, you know, per person. So I'm like, well, what would a rich person do? They just order it. No, no brainer. Right. I have the money in the bank. So I'm like, yeah, let's just do it. Cause it seems like a lot of fun. And part of me feels like it's just part of the unfolding. Like, I don't know why, but I feel like doing the DNA test to see where I'm from is part of my unfolding, part of things unfolding for me. I don't, I don't know yet, but you know, it just felt so inspired and so like, oh yeah, that'd be so cool. Cause you know, I, I, I've asked my father, cause I know my grandmother is German and that side of the family. I'm curious how much German. And then I asked my father and he's not terribly, cl- um, <laughs> terribly um knowing so and there's no one else to ask really so I'm like okay let me just figure this out on my own <laughs> surprise surprise I have to figure things out on my own because people don't know but you know how that goes <laughs> so I'm like that's cool you know it seems like a lot of fun to go down that road of like you know and especially and my husband too would that be cool if he was even more than 50 percent Italian how cool is that? I'm, I'm very drawn to the Italian, um, culture and country because of him. And so I'm like, that's pretty cool. I think it's really cool that he's Italian, but I'm curious what, what else he is as well. So anyhow, um, but that could be part of my identity. Like if I see my DNA results and I'm like, oh my gosh, I've been so drawn to that country or whatever it is. Right that could be part of something that I can hold on to because being American is just such a different thing. If you're not from America, let me know because being an American is especially this year, but (laughs) it's just such a different, it's a different thing. And it's like, it's like nothing and everything and nothing and everything. Does that, I don't know if that makes any sense, but it's like not having much of an identity being an American. It's like all the stereotypical stuff or, you know, I, I, I like listening to what other people think about America, especially if they're in favor or love America and they come here and they start a new life and they just love our culture and stuff, which (laughs) 
fascinated with, like, tell me, tell me what you love about it, because maybe that will make me happy, you know, happier to be here. So anyway, but who knows, that could be part of my, a new identity that I create of like, yes, I resonate with this country or this, you know, this part of Europe or whatever. Right. I think that's kind of cool. So it's got to be part of my unfolding because I was inspired. I'm interested. Um, I talk about creating a new identity, all that good stuff. So anyway, enough of all that blabbing to you. Um, so doing, so create a new identity and daydream about it every morning. So, you know, it doesn't have to be like a, a name change or anything drastic, but it, you know, if it's about your business as a business owner and making more money, you got to put your, you know, yourself in the shoes of those people of a successful business owner. What does that look like to you? I think I, I really dug into that a few days ago, um, about, what does it mean to you? Like, what does a successful business owner look to you? What, who do you have to become to be that successful business owner? Because it all depends on how you believe about it. So if you truly believe, say, say you're a guy, I don't know if there's any men that listen to me, but, um, <laughs> um, say you're a guy and you have this thought in your mind that you always think that a successful businessman wears suits every day. Like that's just the epitome of success and blah, blah, blah. And you don't wear suits because you're at home on the computer all the time, like me, and you don't have to wear a suit. It's like the last thing you probably want to put on, right? Some people are different, but, um, so you wear sweats and a, you know, a t-shirt with a hole ripped in it or something, you know, your pajamas or something. And you feel not very successful because of what you're wearing, right? If you do. If that's something that you resonate with and, you know, change the roles and it could be female and wearing a more of a business suit or, you know, a skirt or a blazer, whatever it is, right? A nice dress, um, sh nice shoes, all that stuff, right? If you, f if you truly really resonate with that, that equals success and you're not doing it, there could be a little bit of a mismatch there vibrationally because especially if you have feelings about it like oh god I feel like like I'm so bummy today I had we were talking about this a while back I don't know what day it was but uh that's kind of how I feel sometimes like when I get more dressed up I feel more like success more like a professional more like I just feel put together when I'm wearing a, you know, typically I wear like right, right now, I can tell you what I'm wearing. I'm wearing an oversized sweatshirt that I love wearing. It's, and even says love on it. I love wearing this thing when it's cold in the morning and I'm wearing just like black leggings. That's it. And so that is a, I don't like today I feel fine because I'm, I'm I, I am going to run a couple errands in a couple of hours. So I'll, you know, I don't even know if I'll change. I'll put a bra on, sorry, TMI, but <laughs> I'm just comfortable today because I've been doing a lot of work on the computer and I wanted to feel comfortable while I do that. So when I leave the house, I may change it up depending on if it's hot outside, then I may change the sweatshirt into something else. Um, you know, it just depends. Some days I feel totally comfortable wearing, you know, just very casual clothes. And some days I just want to dress up a little bit extra, just depends on how I want to feel. And so it's part of that identity though. You know, you have to look at, do I feel good with what I'm wearing? Does it, does it create the feeling of success for me? Because if it doesn't, it's, a, I, I truly believe that it's just easier to go with the belief that like, when I get dressed, when I, when I put dressier clothes on, I am more successful. Or I feel more successful. It's easier to just do that. Get into the feeling of that success belief that you have than it is to try to f change that belief of like, no, s successful people can wear, you know, pajamas all day. They can, I mean, cause they can, it, it does, it, it never matters what you wear. You can be six out, like, goodness gracious. I've said this in the past a lot that my family, the, the men, the, the men 
the, I can't talk. The men on my, <laughs> no, I just really can't talk. The men on my, in my family, my father's side, they all looked nearly homeless and they were all millionaires. And that's where I got the idea of, it does not matter. I mean, look at all of the superstars in the world. They don't, <laughs> they rarely get dressed up. They do look pretty crappy half the time, right? So it does not matter. The only thing that matters is how you feel. That's all that matters. So if you're totally cool wearing pajamas or wearing um, sweats or leggings or gym clothing while you're working, like in your business, and you feel really good and you feel successful wearing that, keep doing that. If you don't feel good wearing that, like figure out what you do want to wear. What is going to make you feel like that million dollar, that, you know, multimillionaire. That's all that matters. And it's just easier to just, you know, you can, you can work on the mindset if you want to, if you're like, no, you know what? I really feel comfortable in yoga pants. I love wearing yoga pants and I love wearing a tank top and I love wearing a baggy sweatshirt over it. It's just, I love the look. So you can change the mindset. You can change the feeling about it of like, and you can go find multimillionaires or billionaires or whoever who wears that attire because you'll find them. All that matters is how you feel. So does that make sense? Okay. I got to let you go because I don't want to keep you very much longer on Christmas. So have an amazing day. Amazing day, guys you know, take it easy, have fun. Um, if, so here's the thing about Christmas. If you're feeling down in the dumps, sad, all of that, um, which is very common. And sometimes I definitely get that way too. Um, just remember that source loves you. There's a ton of non-physical family and friends who adore you. And that's what I think about because, you know, this is the time of year that we usually miss our departed, right? And, you know, celebrate with them. Start talking to them, the non-physicals in your world that you miss because they're right here with you and they want you to have a really special day and, you know, smile. Because the thing is, if, if you feel sad, you won't be able to connect with them because you have to, you have to match the vibration that they have. And their vibration is the highest vibration of love. So surf, you know, feel that love for them. Feel the love, even if it's just for a few seconds or a few minutes. Just feel the love with them. Celebrate the day with them. And you'll feel better. That's what I have to do. Anytime I feel a little bit sad and miss my grandmother, I remember she's right here with me. I just have to resonate to her, to where she is. And she's always here. So have a very Merry Christmas, guys. And I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.